Guys, welcome to the I Love Seville show. It's good to be with you on a Monday. Thank you kindly for joining us. I hope the weekend certainly treated you well. We have a fantastic program lined up for you. We are going to tell the journey, I think, of a business you undoubtedly, if you have not already heard of, you will certainly hear of, and that's Little Planets. It's, um, you know, I'm going to say a vertically integrated business that has three different revenue streams. They have, the first time I was touched by this business was at Devil's Backbone at a festival. And my wife, my son, and I went to this festival, and our son was like, you know, we're having a good time. We have a couple cold ones. We're enjoying food. But our son, he was like, what am I supposed to do here? The music's too loud up front. Uh, we don't want to get them lost by the food trucks and with the crowd. And then we saw little planets kind of tucked away in this <laughs> safe, like, haven, this little heaven for kids. We walked over there, and Trey had the best time at little planets. Then I heard a couple days later, we were at a double date, and a couple brought up the concept of little planets. I was at ACAC in the pool at ACAC, <laughs> and then I, uh, my buddy who was swimming with his daughter was like, you and Trey and Laura need to check out Little Planets. It's amazing for our daughter. Then, like that, I reached out to Ava. She is the, uh, the, the founder, the entrepreneur behind the business. We're going to welcome her and her playroom manager, Jennifer, to the show in a matter of moments. Before we do, let's thank some of the folks that make the program possible. First, I'd like, I'd like to give some attention to Interstate Pests and Service Companies, another phenomenal entrepreneurial story. In 1969, this business was launched by one man and one child truck. Today, it's a four-generation strong business. In 1969, Mr. Wells literally would go to a home. He would service the home from a pest control or home service standpoint. And then he would head to a phone booth and call his second customer and say, may I come to your home now? Now, Interstate Pest and Service Companies has a commonwealth-wide footprint with an office right around the corner from Bodo's Bagels on Harris. That's their headquarters. They have an office in the Shenandoah Valley, an office in Richmond. We are their proud advertising agency of record. And I have seen firsthand how a four-generation strong business has made Charlottesville a better community. And those are the kind of businesses locally owned that we love to change champion, and we love to celebrate here on the I Love Seville show. We also want to give some props to the good doctor, Scott Wagner, Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. Whether it's physical therapy, whether it's sports medicine or chiropractic care, he's changing people's lives. His team is changing people's lives in Central Virginia. Who's got your back? Dr. Wagner's got your back, and we're <laughs> undoubtedly proud to be his advertising agency of record as well. Guys, this show airs Monday through Friday from 1230 to 130 on the I Love Seville Network, and we champion and celebrate and spotlight entrepreneurs and influencers and people that have good energy and good hearts and bright souls that are committed to making Charlottesville better. It's the whole premise of this program. We have two people on set that undoubtedly embody those qualities. And before we get to them, I want to thank the team, Harris Tolber, our director, and Judah Wickhauer and Lauren Linsky for keeping me on track. It's a hard thing to do. I am <laughs> undoubtedly ADHD. And without these guys, we would not be able to execute this program. Um, Harris, let's go to the studio camp. Let's welcome Ava Har. Um, let's welcome Jennifer Iyengar. Iyengar. Okay. <laughs> Iyengar. Um, play room manager, entrepreneur, and founder behind Little Planets. And guys, we're going to start before we talk to the business, before we talk about how you guys are, are killing it with your model. I just want to get to know you guys. Um, and I would love to start with you and just say, like, you know, what are your passions? Um, your hobbies, your interests. What do you love about Charlottesville and the community? Yeah, sure. Um, my two main hobbies are nature <laughs> and children. <laughs> That's what my life revolves around. Um, you know, gardening, um, things like that. But, but Charlottesville, um, there's so there's so many things to love about Charlottesville. Um, I love the area. I love living near the mountains. Um, I love the people. Um, and I love how family friendly it is. I love um, all the things that there are to do with, with my kids here. I love the same um, perfect environment for your business model, which yes. we're going to spotlight <laughs> soon. Jennifer, same question for you. Hobbies, passions, interests, what you love about this community? Um, this is actually how we connected up is kids and nature. <laughs> um, so I lead Hike It Baby in the area, and so we get our kids outside all the time, um, aimed at about the same age range and getting out on the trail, and gardening as well, and pretty much anything that gets us active, so gets us bouncing and playing and crazy with a three-and-a-half-year-old and now a month-old 
kind of becomes a necessity. Three and a half year old and a one month old. Yes. Mm -hmm. 13 month old over here. I can totally relate mm -hmm. when Trey, <laughs> our son, is exhausted and tired and exercised and like running around during the day, sleeps through the night, and mom and dad can have a glass <laughs> of wine and watch Game of Thrones right, and have exactly. a good time. Exactly. Uh, so I totally can it's relate. A game changer. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about, and we're going to create a sizzle reel, and this is a highlight reel from the show that we will send to you. I would like for you, if you could, to put Little Planets, your business, each of your uh, streams mm -hmm. um, into perspective for the audience, and then I'll fire away. Yeah, sure. Um, so as I was telling you earlier, Little Planets is basically composed of three different parts. Um, it started out with the festivals. Um, that's been going on, I guess, for about five years now. Um, and what we do is create um, eco-friendly, nature-inspired play spaces at festivals and live events. Uh, the second piece is the playroom, um, which got started about two years ago, but finally moved into a permanent space this March uh, over at Ixart Park. And the newest branch is um, Little Planet's Designs, which is creating these um, nature-inspired play spaces for, for families indoors or outdoors. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so this is what I love, and I'm going to throw it back to you, is like, you saw, um, like a lot of successful businesses, you saw a niche because there was something that you were struggling with. And you're like, what are my kids going to do at this festival? Okay, there's plenty of stuff to do for mom and dad. And mom and dad can go rage in the front row and listen to the band. Right. Mom and dad can eat at the food truck. Mom and dad can head to the beer or wine stand and have a couple libations. But if, as we get older and as we have kids and we bring the kids to the festivals, what are they gonna do? You saw a need and you filled the void. Put that in perspective. I mean, give me a little sure. firsthand testimonial. Sure, I have two boys. Uh -huh. um, they're now six and 11. Okay. Um, but five years ago, they were much younger and it was actually at um, a Tom Tom Festival block party. Awesome. You know, there was a lot for grownups to do. We could listen to music, we could have a beer. The kids were bored out of their mind. Um, there wasn't a good place to sit down and eat for them. Um, and so I started thinking about um, how I could change this. <laughs> and um, I have another company um, called ASAP Sitters, okay. uh, which uh, primarily functions in the DC area. Okay. But um, I reached out to a festival um, in, in Northern Virginia and said, hey, do you guys need a young kids play area? And they said, yeah, yeah, we do, but we don't have any money for it. So we did a marketing trade. And it just so happened that the people that produced that festival produce another one in Virginia. And then they got in touch with, with us and said, hey, do you want to do one of these at our festival too? And then it just kind of took off from there. <laughs> that is awesome. Let's sizzle reel that, Harris Tolber. Uh, let's get Jennifer in the mix. I mean, I, I feel like you guys have like so much in common here and so many like uh, different like commonalities. Put that in perspective for us. What appealed to you about Little Planets? What, what do you like working there? Um, what are the aspects of the business that really appeal to the community? Um, so I actually, the way I got connected with Eva was at Festi, mm -hmm. and I helped out at the play space at Festi. And so went out with my kid and got to get a ticket and get in and have lots and lots of fun and see kind of help with the craft, see how it all ran. And when she reached out to a group of us looking for someone to take over the, the playroom, um, I saw kind of a perp perfect opportunity to kind of leverage those, those goals of getting my, my kid involved, enjoying with other kids, out in nature, playing with new experiences and learning. Um, and so we came up with the idea of having kind of a different activity each day. And um, that's, that's given me the chance to really use my creativity. So we do crafts, um, we do science projects, we play with food. We so do Jennifer movement. started Let's Get Messy on Thursdays, which okay. is super so, popular. It's yes, a lot of fun. That was my... my <laughs> Tell me about our, that. So um, that's our, our most popular activity. Um, we do messy crafts, so everything from kids painting with full-on... I've had kids lay down and paint with their bodies. Awesome. Um, playing that with, would be me. Playing yeah. with foam, <laughs> um, playing with food. So we made snowmen out of bananas and pretzels and chocolate chips. We have made sailboats out of cheese and little fish crackers and apples and just let the kids go crazy. Um, and I think parents appreciate it because they get to let their kids be messy and they don't have to clean it up. Absolutely. And, you know, <laughs> let me throw the festival piece to you, Jennifer. And, mm -hmm. like, we have 13-month-old, um, our first one. Yeah. Um, and we're very much mama bear and mama dad. 
or, or, or Papa Bear and Mama Bear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can't be a mama dad. <laughs> uh, and like where I'm going with this is like, there's no playbook. You guys remember the first one? It was like, we are just figuring it out. We're just like, mm -hmm. is Trey going to fall down? Is it going to get hurt? Is this a safe spot for him? I would think like knowing if, you know, mom and dad love music and to be outside and be with their friends and with adults mm -hmm. and having a good time, knowing that there was like this safe little like oasis that we could potentially like your work leverage mm -hmm. and utilize at the festival, it's going to be a sense of relief for the parents to go to the festival. Talk to me a little bit about that. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of our idea for everything overarching is creating this place where kids can, parents can step back, let kids be themselves, try new things without having to worry so much about are they going to disappear. Like right. You get these nice little tucked away safe places where kids can, can wander and parents can step back. And that's such a big part of growing up. It's such an important part of this stage, this age for these kids is kind of testing their boundaries and having a safe experience, but feeling like they're kind of getting away with something. Like the first time I put something messy in front of a kid and they're like, you want me to do what? You, you want that on my feet? Yeah, let's paint with my feet. Let's do this. <laughs> Mom never lets me do this. Right. And so the festivals is, mm -hmm. when you're at a festival, you're always watching your kid. You can't kind of sit back and relax. And so that's, that was one of the nice things is being able to move within view of the stage so parents can sit back watch the music and their kids can just go crazy. That's exactly what we did at Devil's Backbone. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. gonna throw this to you. It's yeah. like, we were chilling in chairs, um, a cold beverage in our hand, had an eye on Trey, but he was like 15 yards away mm -hmm. from us. He was chilling, I think it was in a sandbox. Mm -hmm. He's very much a flirt. Um, there was a, like a three or four year old girl that he was trying to tap on the shoulder. <laughs> and I'm like, Trey, what are you doing over there? But it was like so like, like it was a relief. It was like a weight off our shoulders, like the, the oasis that you had created where like it felt safe, it felt comfortable. And like when mom and dad feel comfortable, the whole day goes back. It's Put true. that in it's perspective. True. So, I mean, I look at it from the point of view of the child and from the point of view of the parent, right? Mm -hmm. And the goal for parents was exactly that. Like a place where your kids are entertained and engaged and you can have a conversation and you can have a beer and you can listen to music and everybody's happy. Um, for the kids, the goal is um, to provide really um, multi-sensory experiential play um, that is engaging and that is going to, you know... Uh, uh, promote their creativity, their imagination, but also, you know, because it is open-ended, kids stay in play. You know, it's not, it's not a plastic toy that's playing for you that'll, you know, be done in a few minutes. It's kids, kids come to our areas at festivals and they don't want to leave. That's why they end up staying all day. <laughs> How did you think, which is great, how did you think about evolving the business to like an, uh, a go-to spot um, in the XR Park? Because it started at the festival. It started at festivals, yeah. and, that, and that continues to grow. Like yeah. We've got a jam-packed summer of festivals. Um, with the Playroom, that, was, um, that actually happened. I, I pitched at TomTom Tom, uh, crowdfunded pitch night, right? And I got second place. And awesome. I got a, this was a couple years ago, and I got um, a CIC scholarship, which cool. is how I ended up at CIC. And it was through um, their mentorship that the idea for a play space, uh, for a brick and mortar, um, happened. And so... It was this big kind of scary, overwhelming thing, but they were just like, come on, try it. <laughs> so I said, okay. <laughs> I got to ask you about that. I mean, like, I feel like, and we, so we work with a lot, we have early stage businesses, mid stage businesses, late stage businesses. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the entrepreneurs who are thinking about launching a business come in here and it's like the fear yeah. of failure that they have to get over right. where it's like, you mean I have to update my job status on my Facebook page? <laughs> what if this doesn't work and everyone sees that it right. doesn't work? Like, what happens if this and this and that? How did you manage getting over the fear? Because going from a festival concept right. where your overhead is a lot lower, it's essentially like your sweat equity right. and, and, and probably the investment of a lot of stuff up front. Mm -hmm. But it's not like something like it's reoccurring like a lease. Yeah. No, it was, um, it was, it was super scary. Um, but I think the... The networking and the community that CIC provides uh -huh. is, is kind of, it almost feels like a safety net. And, you know, the, it's kind of like a dare, you know, try it. If, if, you, if you don't try, you'll never know, right? And yeah. so 
And so what's the worst that can happen? It can crash and burn, and then at least you tried. And so well, I'm trying. <laughs> Look, well, you're killing it. She's crushing it. Put, I'm going to throw one more question to you. Put the Charlottesville Investment Collaborative into perspective. Is that the CIC? Uh, community Investment community Collaborative. Investment community, investment community, collaborative. community Investment Collaborative. Put that in perspective for us. Uh, so that's like a um, small business boot camp okay. um, is, is essentially how I think of it. But they um, do, uh, I think it's... I don't remember how many weeks it is, 11 or 14, but you uh, apply or you get a scholarship or you find your way into their um, program and uh, you get, you're, uh, you're in a small group with a mentor and you kind of go through all the different aspects of running a business. So stuff that a lot of us would have no idea about, you know, taxes, advertising, marketing, sure. you know, all that kind of stuff. The whole shebang. The whole shebang. So it's, yeah, so it's kind of a condensed business program um, that... Uh, that you just and it's so worthwhile to do. It was so informative and so um, valuable, you know, in terms of that network and in terms of all the people you meet and all the support that you get. So I love it. I love yeah. it. I'm going to throw this to you, um, Jennifer. Before we do, let's thank some of the people that are watching. We have people watching across the Commonwealth. We have people in Richmond and D.C. I have some people in North Carolina and Tennessee watching right now. James Watson, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Jay Wyden and Keswick, thank you for tuning in. Billy Kernick of VV's Cakes, thank you for turning in. Oh, Laura, hey. <laughs> Laura Jackson is watching right now. What's up, Laura? Um, uh, we have Nathan Yount watching right now. Um, a lot of folks watching. Like and share the stream. Megan Hillary, thank you for watching. Megan! Yeah. Jack, is it Megan? Megan. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to help me with this one. Jacqueline. Oh, Yoshere. Yoshere is watching Yaker, right now. I, guess, yeah. I like it. I like, it's Chicago. Like, she's in Chicago. Like and share the stream, guys, if you could do us that favor. Like and share the stream. Um, your thoughts on like the, this is what I loved about it, and you've touched on it already. Like when I was watching Trey at Little Planets at Devil's Backbone, he had like you know we struggle with managing screen time mm -hmm. okay it's like he constantly is like reaching for like our iPhone or our iPad and sometimes we're just like sometimes we're just like you know what let's just give it to him because if we don't give it to him right now we're gonna lose our freaking mind <laughs> and this is the one thing that's gonna calm him down but we know in retrospect then we feel like a little guilty because like next mm -hmm. thing you know, he's watching Mouse is Missing on repeat for like 10 <laughs> times in a row. And dad is literally about to lose his freaking mind because how many times can you watch Mouse is Missing in a row? Uh, so let me throw... Let's not introduce that to my three-year-old. I don't even know what that is. Okay, <laughs> you're a lot smarter than we are. Okay, this is our first one. You're on two. You've got more experience. Let me throw this to you here. What, I mean, talk to me about like the, the tactical and like the dynamic nature and the interactive nature and like the hands-on nature mm -hmm. of uh, what you guys are doing because I love that aspect of it. So um, the goal is to keep it open-ended. So with a lot of toys, you hand them something. It has a very specific thing it can do. Once they've done that two or three times, they set the toy down, they're bored, they move on, they get bored, and they start asking for the screen because the screen can provide that sort of quick stimulation, stimulation feedback. Right. Um, and so what our goal is, and with the, the toys that we have and the activities that we have, is they can come at it and try it one way. Okay, that didn't work. You try a different thing. That had an unexpected outcome. They go with that for a little while. What if you add in this toy to this activity over here? So I have kids get up from an art project or a Let's Get Messy project and go get toys and bring them to come and paint with them. So painting with pine cones, what does that look like? Those kind of flexible ways of it's thinking brilliant. about the world gives them the chance to just be themselves, and we're not doing it. I love it's that. Them. Mm -hmm. Was that trial and error? I mean, how did you get to that point? Or were you like, I mean, <laughs> psychologist here? I mean, how did you get child psychologist? Um, so I was a nanny for a lot of years. So you saw And a hand. lot of it is just literally, you're like, I'm losing my mind. What happens if I hand them this? Because this is before you could hand them a small screen. Right. So you go, okay, um, well, we haven't played with rice. Let's go put some rice. Look, it makes a fun noise. Okay, now it feels cool. What if we add toys into it? So you just kind of... Out of desperation? Uh, <laughs> I can totally write that. Like that. My son's favorite toy sometimes is a plastic water bottle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because exactly. it makes noise. And I'm like, yeah. what the heck? I'm like, okay, if this is keeping you from crying, dude, you can have the plastic water bottle. I don't care if it spills anywhere. So go get some rice. Yeah. Put the lid on. See what happens. You've That's got a musical <laughs> instrument. Yeah. Put on some music. Can you find the beat? Like, you just kind of build on it. I love it. There. So, I love it. Fun. I want to throw this to you. Um, you are now, and I don't want to, you know, set the stage. You set the stage. You're now designing um, 
do you call them epicenters? Do you call them uh, play spaces? Play spaces. Call them play spaces. Put yeah. that in perspective. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, it just kind of grew out of um, you know what we've been doing, creating these these outdoor play spaces um, for kids and people saying like, oh, where's that table from? And we, we built it. <laughs> um, or uh, you know, just conversations. Your husband built My it. husband built it. That's yeah. right. He builds. It's he amazing. builds our play tables. That's yeah. right. <laughs> in all his free time, um, <laughs> and you know, doing the the play space design, um, it just kind of naturally grew out of that. And, and and people asking, like, hey, you know, would would you be willing to, you know, design something for me? Um, and so our first one, our first outdoor play space that we're going to do is at Ix Art Park because that's what Ix Art Park needs is an open ended free play space um, for all the kids that come there, totally. you know? So yeah. think we're thinking mud kitchen, we're thinking sand play area. Um, yeah. It's going to be great. That's <laughs> awesome. I mean, that is that is what Ix needs. Yeah. I mean, Ix has like the art park piece, but how many times could the kids play on the steel stationary bike that doesn't go anywhere without losing their mind? <laughs> right. And I'm not like marginalizing right, 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 it, but right, it's not right. made for kids. Right. Yeah. Uh, let me throw this to you. Yeah. Like, when did you start thinking like, was there an aha moment with your business? You are like dude, I got something here, and this is, like, really, really good. Um, did you have anything like that? I keep having them. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. You're like um, me. <laughs> are, are, do you feel like sometimes, like, uh, our brains are, like, our biggest strengths but our biggest weaknesses? It's like, because we see opportunity everywhere. Right, right. And yeah. then it's, like, focusing on, like, the opportunities that are, like, best for the community yeah. as opposed to spreading our most precious, uh, you know, commodity, which is our human time, our capital, right. our time, right. around to other opportunities. How do you manage that? I don't. I'm you don't. Just go for everything. I do. I love I'm it. I was gonna call you out there. <laughs> <laughs> do you really? I try, but sometimes I make it worse. Yeah. How do you make it worse? See, this is this is this is how I've done. I, I found an amazing program director for the playroom. Like that's what I did. I outsourced that, and I trust Jennifer to run that you know, in an amazing way. So I'm learning, you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Jennifer is my Judah over there. Judah, yeah. I'm giving you some props over here on the show. Okay, seven years we've been working together. Savannah College of Art and Design, Judah Wickhauer. Yeah. Let, me throw, let me throw this to you. How about the aha moment for you? I mean, did you see like, oh my gosh, this is something that like we totally need. This is going to be great for the community. Any, any firsthand perspective like that? So um, I kind of got connected up with the playroom twice. So a friend is the one who pointed me in the direction of working at the festival. And she said, yeah, you should come out. I know this is something you're interested in. You love music festivals, and it's for your kid as well. So I came out, worked a few hours. It was amazing. And I got to kind of see how the different parts fit together. And I was like, this is genius. And then um, through Hike It Baby, when they had their grand opening for Little Planets at um, Front Porch, mm -hmm. we actually had a table. And so I got to see kind of how the playroom started and how that would run. And so that was a second aha of, okay, so a completely different side of it. You bring it indoors, but you bring nature indoors. So parents have yet again this safe space, but kids get to experience new tactile Rocks, sticks. How do you build with something that's not a block? Love that. Mm -hmm. so, Love that. What's Hike It Baby? Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. um, so Hike It Baby is a nonprofit um, focused on getting families outdoors. So open to anyone. Uh, anyone who's a member of the group can host a hike. So whatever fits your schedule, whatever time, whatever speed. We do toddler hikes. We move at the speed of a toddler, which is snail pace at points, and <laughs> high speed with stick in hand at another point. So um, that's exciting. And it's worked really well with um, Little Planets in terms of mm -hmm. the parents who are looking for that same experience are also looking for a chance to get out with like-minded people who you can walk along and talk to an adult and let your kid just go. I feel like you're, and I don't want to assume here, I feel like your customer base and your biggest fans and supporters are parents like my wife and I that are like, oh my gosh, if we don't get out of the house, we're going to lose our freaking mind. Exactly. Uh, we, this house is a mess. How are we going to get ahead of keeping this clean when Trey is destroying the house everywhere he goes? And we need some fresh air, and we also know that our son needs a change of scenery as yeah. well because when he has a change of scenery he then acts differently because mm -hmm. maybe he can't tell us at 13 months old that he's like hey i'm bored of being in <laughs> the living room with all my toys and i want to get outside but he can't verbalize that to us yeah. um put in perspective for us if you could like who your client base is who your biggest supporters are at little planets sure well i mean it's it's parents with young children definitely uh -huh. um and i i think um you know, parents, a lot of parents that are interested in nature, um, we ha are influenced heavily by Waldorf and Montessori and Reggio philosophies and, and that 
it goes into designing our play space. Um, and, uh, and oh, and <laughs> I know what I was gonna say. Because, you know, you start talking to parents and there's organizations like Hike It Baby and there's other um, organizations that have the same passion for children and nature. Garden. That's Tinker Garden. That's, that's the, how the Kids in Nature Festival came about because why not get all these people together mm -hmm. um, and, you know, create an opportunity for them all to, to network and for the parents to, you know, get to sample a little bit of what everybody's doing. I mean, um, yeah, those are, that's our demographic. What are you thinking? Jump in here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the other way that I've connected with Eva and other families in the area getting outdoors is Tinker Garden, which mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard about I that. I have not. Um, so this will be good for you in about five months. Please, yeah. tell me. Um, we need all the help we can get. You can bring a 13-month-old. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I started at yeah. 15 months, and watching Aaliyah move from 15-month um, to 18-month, it's an outdoor nature play, kid-led um, experience so each week they kind of have a different theme so empathy things like that but it's learning about the world outside so our very first class was how do pigs keep cool in the summer it was mm -hmm. a summer lesson awesome. and they created mud and then they just got destroyed with mud like head to toe <laughs> mud it was wonderful they had so much fun it was wonderful. Um, and so how does water run how do plants grow what plants grow in different seasons all of that um, but it's 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 wonderfully led. They tie in books, um, and then at the end you have a snack time, and then you kind of sit down and discuss how you saw your kid interact differently than you were expecting. So it's again parents stepping back, letting kids take the lead. Um, That's not easy, especially for the first one. It's like I mean, give me some perspective here, and I don't want to like marginalize <laughs> anyone, but like there's no playbook. I remember like leaving the <laughs> hospital, and like my wife is like a superhero. Like she literally is like. <laughs> keeping Trey alive right now while doing like receivables, payables, and like project management and social media scheduling. Like since we've had Trey, like there is no question in my life that women are superheroes compared to men and that this planet cannot survive without females. I, I say that over and over again. You guys are freaking <laughs> rock stars. And I mean, put it in perspective for me, and I'll throw this to you, is like, like when you're a first time parent and it's like a matter of like letting that leash go, and mm -hmm. like saying, go have some freedom and some liberty, that is not easy to do. But when you see other mm -hmm. parents and you have this community and this sense of like sorority and fraternity and you see other kids doing it in front of you in a safe right. way, it's so much easier. Yes, yeah. yes. Throw that to me. So um, I lead a Tinker Garden class, <laughs> too. Um, and it, it is um, exactly helping parents learn that. So, you know, you've, we've heard about helicopter parents. And so in Tinker Garden, we talk a lot about, like, hummingbird parents, you know, uh, parents that are a little What's bit... What's a helicopter parent? It's the parents that are constantly hovering above their child, gotcha. making sure that nothing happens uh -huh. that is remotely you know, dangerous or okay. unsafe. So a hummingbird parent is gonna be a little bit further off. They're gonna be watching their child and they're gonna zoom in if something looks unsafe, but otherwise they're gonna kinda of stay back and let their child lead their own play. It's a great analogy yeah. right there. <laughs> um, I might be from time to time a helicopter parent. <laughs> Stephanie <laughs> Nelson McCauley <laughs> says, hey Jennifer, <laughs> she's watching in Raleigh, North Carolina, I believe. Uh, Christy Gillette. I believe yes. Aaron DeYoung mm -hmm. is watching right now. Hi. Hello. If, yes, if you guys could give it a like and share. Yep. BB Reyes. Yes, um, New York. Is, is watching right now from New York, it sounds like. Um, Bill Granford, Rob Lawson, Michael Jameson, Jeremy Stanwick, Grace in Richmond, Rick Henderson, Meg Taylor. Um, a lot of people watching right now. Holly Slother, Slothier, thank you for watching. <laughs> Hi, Holly. I'm sorry if I your name of Holly. I'm terrible about that. Amber Dawn, thank you for watching. Give it a like and share. Daniel Kaufman from Public is watching. Tyler Berry from Catch the Chef. Rod Burnell in Green is watching right now. Give the show a like and share. Um, your favorite aspects of the job. Oh, getting to know the family. So yeah. the families that come in all the time and kind of watching the kids grow and get more comfortable, especially with the shy kids, the ones that stay really close to the parents initially, and watching as they come in week by week and they get more and more comfortable and they'll kind of get a little farther out and you can see the parent like... Blossom. Oh, you can take that, take that breath and like, <laughs> okay, watching them interact with other kids their age. So... Um, you get very, very different interactions at different ages. So watching kids that have first come in very young and they don't even notice the other kids and then watching that first interaction where they're like, but I want that toy. How do I get that toy? <laughs> so watching the parents, okay, okay, let's, let's work it out. So th those kind of interactions, I've always loved that about kids. Um, 
watching the different ages interact, a five-year-old coming and helping a two-year-old do something, just the, the byplay between different families, and then watching parents be able to sit down, take a breath, and chat. Like we have a nice little sitting area for parents mm -hmm. now, and so they can just sit and watch watch their kids go to town. I love it. Mm -hmm. Let's turn that into a sizzle reel here. Start with my question <laughs> all the way through that answer. That was a money answer right there. <laughs> Your favorite um, aspect of the job. Um, so I, I think the, the philosophy of connecting kids with nature mm -hmm. um, is the most important part to me and giving children these experiences that are going to foster um, their imagination and their creativity, but also a connection with nature that they will carry with them into the future. Um, and for parents, um, for them, a lot of parents haven't seen their children um, in that kind of play environment, whether it's indoor or outdoors. Mm -hmm. So just um, seeing parents relax, but it's because their child is engaged for a really long time and they haven't ever had that experience. Um, and so maybe they can take some of that home with them and um, have more open-ended toys or have more, um, you know, uh, simple toys that, that children can really... Um, create their own play with. I love it, I love it. Sizzle reel that one as well, Harris Tolbert. Sarah Hill Buchensky, thank you for watching, and Crozet, <laughs> least favorite aspect of the job. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, so I actually find it sort of soothing some days, but the putting every toy back in its <laughs> container, Yeah. Um, because every once in a while you get that kid that is so inventive that all the toys must come out of their containers to be joined together. That's my son. That is literally my son. I'm like, son, you're not going to play with all these toys, dude. What are you doing? And you just watch him go and dump. I and think, dump. I think and that's dump. his favorite thing It's a thing learning behavior. It is. It's a and, I, and I love it to a point. I don't love it but at all. But at the end of the day, yeah. at the end of the day, when everyone goes home and you look at that giant pile and you're like, there are approximately 400 pieces that need to go back into 15 containers. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, there are days. I bet there are. <laughs> I respect your patience immensely right now. You're and Jennifer favorite. remembers what goes in where. She, <laughs> she will put everything back exactly in the right place. What did you say? It's... You have a little OCD tendencies? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, what is your least favorite aspect of the job? Okay, that's easy, because I've said it many times. It's when kids are getting dragged out of the play areas at festivals. Yeah. <laughs> when, they're, when they when they do not want to leave, down. and it's yeah. for whatever reason mom and dad have to go. They have to and, go, yeah. And they, the kids just, you know, them, I want to stay at a little play. <laughs> but in some ways, <laughs> that's got to make you feel so good, because yes, the kids have such an amazing They are, experience. that is, yes. But just, that that's the hardest part, is watching yeah. that. It's, and then they get older, and they come and give you a hug, and yes. they tell you bye, or they blow you a kiss, mm -hmm. and so that kind of balances it. I love it. I love it. You <laughs> mentioned you have a business in D.C. that is, uh, was it ASAP Nannies? It's ASAP Sitters. ASAP yeah. Sitters. Yeah, it's a sitter referral service. What, yeah. yeah, put that in perspective, and how did running that business in D.C., is it still active? Yeah, it's still active. How that it's... has helped you with this? Um, well, I started that business because I wanted to stay home with my older son. Cool. Um, that was my motivation. <laughs> Um, and it, you know, it, the, the goal was just to refer pre-screened qualified sitters to families that need them because we all know, I mean, it takes a village, you know, we all, whether it's through childcare or through play spaces or whatever, we are all in this together as parents trying to, trying to figure it out. Um, so yeah, it's it's, it's still, it's still running. I mean, we have a small branch in Charlottesville too, but the DC area is the main branch of it. And, um, I mean, I learned a lot of a lot of the boring stuff along the way, a lot of the admin and the bookkeeping and the tax stuff, and so that, that I mean that was helpful as background. But the two businesses are very different. I love it. Lisa yeah. Bean Williams says hi, Jennifer. Hi, Lisa. You are absolutely amazing, and gives a heart <laughs> emoji on the stream. Aww. If you guys have a question, comment. If you want to relay something to the ladies, I'm happy to. Just put it on whatever Facebook page you're watching. Um, let me throw this to you here. How about Charlottesville? I would think like this community. I mean. This concept, even like the hiking concept, I mean, this concept is freaking perfect for this community. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you have breweries and vineyards out of the wazoo. You have like this like melting pot of people that love to be outside. You have an unparalleled music scene, especially for the size of our town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have festivals popping up literally everywhere, almost the, to the point where there's like a saturation of festivals on any given weekend, which is good for you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how, I'll throw the same question to both of you. <laughs> Jennifer, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna start with you. How has like the community and like the elements within the community that I just like kind of rattled off, how is that like a perfect fit for what you guys are doing with Little Planets? Um, so 
I think a, an additional aspect is um, because of the university and because of the hospital, we get a lot of people who are moving in and they don't have a community, they don't have a village. Good point. And um, they're looking for parents who are kind of in a similar situation, parents who have kind of a similar mindset. And so they'll come to the playroom and um, you'll see them, as I talk to them, I'm like new to the area, um, looking to meet parents. And I was like, we're a perfect setup, mm -hmm. come on in. And then you'll find kids who um, are a similar age, so you can talk about survival at that age. And you have parents who are at an older age. And okay, how, did, how do I get to, to that? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. how do we get there? Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting in terms of how parents can connect and how kids can connect um, with those different aspects. So um, I just, when I went back into the playroom the other day for the first time since having my, my newbie, um, there were two parents who I was there for their very first meeting. Their kids are just a few weeks apart and they were both new to the area and so they hadn't met anybody and they were in nine months later, That's still awesome. coming and meeting up at mm -hmm, Little Planets mm -hmm. so their kids can play and they can just chat. So they've made friends. That's like the dream. Yeah, so they it's made exactly, friends because of Little Planets. Yeah. It's another favorite <laughs> part of the job is watching parents come in and, and kind of make new friends. I love that story. Create new I community. love that aspect of the story. Um, uh, Elena Rose Solon, I mean, this is mm -hmm. tough name day. Elena Rose Solon <laughs> says, we love Little Planets. We love you ladies. You guys are absolute rock stars and does triple heart emojis right here. Thanks, Elena. Uh, if you guys have a comment, a question, if you have some props that you want to relay to the ladies, I'm happy to do that. How about, uh, same with you. I mean, like, you like undoubtedly um, embody like all the qualities of like an entrepreneur. I feel like you like, <laughs> like I said, you see opportunity everywhere. Your mind is probably going a mile a minute all the time. Uh, you know, like same, same. <laughs> um, what people may see as like uh, chaos is like organized chaos to us where we probably thrive on having like 18 balls in the air and probably get bored and probably don't perform at our best when there's only one ball in the air. Like we need the pressure of like, my back is against the wall. <laughs> I need to get this done. Uh, do you, yeah, are, is that yeah, you? Yeah, that's always been me. Yeah, <laughs> I totally get it. I, yeah. I, I totally get it. First, let me ask you about that. I mean, how has that helped you and how do you manage that? Because I, I like to learn from other people sure. that are similar. Well, I mean, I think, um, I love it. I mean, that, that's the, that's the you know, kind of impetus behind it, like creating these play spaces, watching the kids play, you know, watching the parents enjoy themselves, being able to have my kids with me um, at these events, um, you know, it, it's family time for us too. I, I, I feel like I've, um, I've been able to check off so many boxes, you know, the, of things that are important to me and things that I'm passionate about that it's just, that's, I have that energy, so I just try to go with it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think we should give some props to uh, your husband. Yeah. Um, he <laughs> is building the tables. He is. He said he's a nurse at UVA, mm -hmm. and Jennifer Varshavsky Hi, is Jennifer. giving props to the show right now. It's another Tinker Garden instructor. Uh, I yes. love it. I love it. And another Hike It Baby Boss. I love it. I love She's this how community. I got connected yeah. with Festy. Isn't that, isn't that such an awesome aspect of Charlottesville? Because I feel like everybody is like, and it's like, it's got its good, th it's mainly good. Um, now, if you show your, you know what, at a, one night on a Friday and like get after a little too much like I have in the past, then that could get around. But it's mainly good that everyone is like, three degrees apart from each other. It's like it's one like, degree. Once you have children, seriously, it's like one degree. Right? It's yeah. amazing. I've been in here 19 years and I feel like, you know, and my wife and I talk about this. We go down the downtown mall on like a Friday night and it's like, we are going to stop like 10 times mm -hmm. talking to somebody as we go to like dinner or something yeah. like that. Put that in perspective of how that's been beneficial with like the business and like how it's helped get the brand out there. Sure. Well, I mean, just what comes to mind is that a lot of, we have a lot of, I guess, repeat customers at different mm -hmm. festivals or at different events and stuff like that. So kids, um, kids recognize us. First of all, they know who we are. I don't remember all the names, but you know, hi, yeah. Miss Eva. Um, and they, they'll call me out if I had something at one point and then didn't bring it to another festival. Like I've had little girls come up to me and be like, you didn't bring the water table. <laughs> oh, I'll bring it next time. I'll bring it next time. So it's, um, I don't know. I know that, uh, if, if we're going to be at an event, families know that there's going to be something for their kids to do and um, and that they're not going to have to be stressed out. I love you know? it. I love so. it. In a lot of ways, the fact that you guys are at the event is like 
gonna start as your brand continues to build and expand yeah. and grow is gonna be like a generation of ticket sales for that event. Right, absolutely. So like I absolutely. feel like on some weekends, I'll throw this to you and get yeah. out of your way. Like on some weekends, literally like there's like two or three festivals going on. Mm -hmm. And now we're at the point with a 13 month old and we wanna bring him with us yeah. because we don't have family in the area. Okay, and you know, it's like you said, a lot of times it takes a village. A lot of times we feel like we're on an island because we don't have family in the area and we're very mama bear mm -hmm. and papa mm -hmm. bear still. Mm -hmm. um, and where I'm going with this is like, we're so gonna, gonna look- you're gonna bring them to the festival where yeah, we're gonna plan, is it? that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's, and, and like, that's, that's awesome. like a leverage yeah. point for you with the festival where you're like, dudes, give right. us some more here for what we're doing for you guys. I mean, have right. you thought about that? Uh, sure, sure I thought about that. I mean, it was, it, it, it took me a year to kind of say, to kind of show festivals, you guys need this. Like, there's yeah. nothing for little kids. There's nothing for kids five and under. And and now it's pretty obvious that it was very needed. Right. Um, you know, so, yeah, yeah we we'll definitely hope to, to grow that and, and to, you know, be able to share the value of what we do with, with the festivals. Why do you think it took so long? Is it because the festivals were so focused on, like, millennials without kids for their ticket sales and their revenue generation that they weren't focused on the parents? Yeah, I mean, I think they were focused on parents, but I just think um, if... If you don't have kids, you tend to think of kids a little bit older. Ah, so there's activities for older kids. There's there's rock walls and there's you know different games and things like that, but just not anything for five and under. Yeah, I love it. I so. love it. Joe, what do you think, Jennifer? Um, so I will say as a note, without having family in the area, um, we do. You don't offer, have family in the area. I I do. Okay. We we do we do offer date nights. Okay. Oh yes. Oh, that's so, huge. Um, Tell me about that. Yeah, that's becoming bigger and bigger. <laughs> you might be um, seeing us in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> We've and had so, three date nights in 13 months. Yep. Yeah. So um, you can come out to Ix and drop yep. off your kid. One, yeah, two, or three do hours. Two, we usually do two Fridays or a Friday, Saturday a month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How has that been received? Um, so it's been getting bigger and bigger. Lots and lots of parents are kind of looking for that opportunity, especially parents who come in and their kids are already comfortable in the playroom. Mm -hmm. They recognize the people. They recognize the space. So parents that are more uncomfortable dropping them off with someone they don't know. They come in and they're in a space they already feel safe. They already recognize. And so they're a lot more comfortable a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Love and it. so they're able to just go and they're right there. So you eat dinner at Ix. There are multiple restaurants there to eat at. And um, I've only had to do it twice, but I can call and let the parent know, hey, they're still upset. Would you like to come back and check on them? Maybe bring them some food. And it gives the opportunity. You're right there. You don't have like to worry escape about valve. It. Mm -hmm. You need it. Um, Bernadette Connor, love this. Go ladies. Creating the Hi, community, uh, mm -hmm. making the community better. We all appreciate what you are doing. Um, she's from, she's a branch ambassador at Hike It Baby. <laughs> um, so she's actually just recently moved to the area. Okay. She's one of my Hike It Baby crew. I love it. I love it. I love it. Give it a like, give it a share, any stream that you're watching. Jessica Pastramek um, Harris from Kilwins is watching right now. What's up, Jessica? Hope you're doing well. Give it a like and a share. Um, your thoughts? Uh, oh, man, we have a lot of comments coming in. This one's from <laughs> Jessica Tunks Kylie. Huh? Um, so grateful for all your hard work connecting Charlottesville's children. So Jessica, with Jessica runs the Blue Ridge Forest School. She's another mama that's all about kids and nature. She she rocks. I love. What's the Blue Ridge Forest School? I've not heard it's about. It's a that. forest school. Um, she is out with kids all day in the woods, and that um, that is their that that's where they're learning. I love what you guys are doing yeah. <laughs> because you're coming up with ideas where it's like not just like screen time. And like, that's something yeah. like we're trying to figure out as a very young and early stage couple of like, how do we manage like the screen time? And we're frankly, I mean, and I think my wife would agree with this. I'm not speaking out of turn. I know you're watching <laughs> right now, sweetheart. <laughs> um, it's like, I, you know, sometimes I feel like we just kind of fall to the trap because it's easy. And like seeing Trey at Devil's Backbone for that festival, I saw a different side of him because like a lot of times I'm like here at work, I'm like you working like, I mean, I don't know if you're doing, I'm working like 70 hours a week here. Um, and, and I see him oftentimes in the morning and on the weekends and I miss like the, uh, which is tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough for that. I miss oftentimes like the bedtime cause I'm still grinding here. Um, so like to see him in like this element that you had created at devil's backbone to see him like so happy in a way that I hadn't seen him before was like, it was like amazing. And it was like, mm -hmm. like, honestly, like heart, like filled my heart like, and thank filled you. my, well, thank I Thank you for sharing that. that. I mean, that's. That's that's really what it's for. Mm -hmm. It was like it was like a phenomenal experience. That was my favorite aspect of the festival mm -hmm. was seeing him play at Little Planets because he like <laughs> didn't need us. Yeah. You know, he wasn't like sprinting to mom or like sprinting to dad for attention. He was like chilling and just it was it was I saw him kind of like almost like uh, growing up a little bit 
and it's crazy to say because he's only 13 months, but you, know, you understand what I'm saying. Ind independent play. Independent yeah, play. Independent play. Yeah, absolutely. It was rewarding. Yeah. Um, Jessica says, so grateful for all your hard work. And she <laughs> guys says, keep killing it, guys. Um, you guys are doing excellent things for our community. Thank you kindly for commenting on that, Jessica. Um, you guys have filled 52 minutes. I felt like it's been like five <laughs> minutes here on the show. Uh, we, ha we do have some questions coming in. Sure. Do you uh, expect a Little Planets to have other locations, for instance, somewhere in Crozet? And that's from Tim, who lives in Crozet. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I, I yes, I think um, other locations are in our future. I don't know how soon, um, but I think uh, Crozet and Palmyra and some other places could definitely use something similar. Yeah. Totally, this would crush it in like Zion's Crossroads. Yeah. Um, and this I is think in terms of with the design aspect, having places out there be set up. I know the um, the play space by the Crozet Library could use some. Oh, Some love. Yeah. Would crush yeah. it there. Yeah. yeah. I would crush it there. Um, another question coming in. This is a good question. This is from Rick and Richmond, and he's saying, have you considered franchising the concept at all? <laughs> Recently. Um, <laughs> re, uh, yes. had that conversation. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, I... I I, I mean, it's still early. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. still early. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there's a lot of questions about, you know, whether to franchise, whether to um, create a nonprofit branch, whether to keep all three parts of the business under the same umbrella. Like, I'm, I'm definitely in the stage of trying to do as much research as I can about that, and mm -hmm. um, not. I don't have clarity yet on where, on, on which direction is best for us to move forward. Harrison, who's watching yeah. in Fluvanna, says this would be perfect for Fluvanna County. Mm -hmm. We need something like this, and we would be interested in maybe helping you take it to Fluvanna County. I mean, I'm sure awesome. you're getting reached out by people <laughs> all the time about this, aren't you? Yes, people ask a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. how do you manage it? You're like, guys, pump the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I you know, I, I want to hear what people need, yeah. um, what people are looking for, where they're looking for it, what space they have in mind. I mean, I, um, I'm, I'm open to those conversations and those and those opportunities for sure. Does it take a special place? Does it like um, from like the play space standpoint, or can it kind of like be molded into any scenario you need? Like, could this work in an <laughs> urban I don't environment? Think, I don't think you see where we've molded it. Could it work <laughs> in like say like a DC? Yeah. Or a New York City? It could. It yeah. could absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, yes. Uh, I mean, I think um, having access to an outdoor space is, uh -huh. is a, a amazing part of it. it. It's doable if you don't, but if you can, that is even better. Um, and then just really having a space that feels clean and bright and welcoming mm -hmm. um, and, and safe, you know? Is it a membership-based concept? Uh, yes, there are there are memberships or there's just drop-in. Okay. Or their parents can also do a 10-pack of visits. Cool. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So kind of what you're creating is like... Uh, kind of like this hybrid uh, monthly club for kids to help them experience outdoors in a, a dynamic, tactical environment, also like arts um, mm -hmm. in a safe, clean environment where parents can have a sense of relief. This is a brilliant idea. <laughs> I love this idea. So you're going to come visit with your kid, I right? need to. I need to get away from this office. My wife is texting me right now. It's like, dude, we need to go to here, Jerry. She's, we do need to go, Laura. We totally need to do that. Uh, let me throw this to you, Jennifer. Um, your thoughts on like what you would like to see, and this is a tough question for you, um, <laughs> your thoughts on what you'd like to see where I like the business go. Um, I do want us to be able to get outdoors more. Um, so we have a little courtyard, and, and I want to clean that up so that I can do more outdoor activities. Um, I, th I think right now, because we're kind of expanding our hours and our offerings, we're, we're growing in a way that I feel like was needed, but we had to be in the right space. Mm -hmm. So the fact yes. that we found our space is finally letting us move in the direction we wanted to go. Um, so expanding our hours, offering yoga, offering activities well, that's a good for, idea. for well, parents. And also connecting um, with other community needs. Mm -hmm. Like I'm hoping we can do more evening um, support group, parent support groups, yep. um, or, um, you know, therapy groups, or, or really just any, yeah. um, any, any other ways that we can support the community having that space now. Yeah. Um, another question coming in is, are date nights with membership only? No. Okay, so that can be a drop-in. That can be, any, yes, anyone can sign up for a date night. That mm -hmm. is brilliant. Um, another question coming in, have you considered cooking classes? Um, we don't really have the setup, like we yeah. don't have the, the ovens or anything we like that. We don't have a kitchenette. But um, with Let's Get Messy, the parents have brought up the idea of um, having a 
dedicated how to have fun with food with kids. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's something that I'm considering on how to do it because if I can't cook it, um, how do you how do you play with that? But with the let's get messy activities we've done, it's not cooked food. Mm -hmm. It's just how to how to get kids interested in vegetables specifically is how parents are like well my kid has refused carrots up until this point and they're sitting there eating that carrot they were supposed to paint with so <laughs> um this needs to happen more and so i think i think that's that's something i'm considering for one of our expanded hours is how do we make just a food activity mm -hmm. every it. week love it love it yeah and if there's if there's parents out there that have specific um things or ideas that they're looking for let yeah. us know like we're very open to feedback and ideas and you know, if there are people interested in having a, a cooking class or a specific art mm -hmm. class or what, just let us know. We'll make it happen. Meg Taylor wants and to know. And she sounds too crazy. Right. <laughs> We're pretty open to crazy. Yeah, I get that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty open to crazy here. I see what we've been doing crazy for 11 years in May. Uh, Meg Taylor and Crozet says, talk to us about the festival that you put on and any ideas of having festivals in the future. That's a good question. Uh, so we do Kids Adventure. in Nature. This will be the second year we do it, um, and it's at Ix Art Park. And the goal was to bring together uh, nonprofits, organizations, and schools that have a focus on nature and children. Um, and so uh, that's you know, that's what we did. It's June. It's June second. Mm -hmm. June second, ten to one. Mm -hmm. What'd you learn um, from the first iteration? Um, that even in torrential downpour, it was packed. I giant mean, people, tents are magic. Yeah, giant <laughs> tents are magic. I mean, you had torrential you know. downpour and it was still packed. I mean, yeah. it, it, it was off and on. Okay. It was off and on, but the, the, the weather was, though. you know, by the end it was on. By the end yeah. it was on. Yeah, there were. <laughs> it was a whole other level of experiential play because the kids were running like knee deep in puddles. There was um, some pretty <laughs> impressive splashing going on, and the kids were loving it. And you the guys were like, what just happened? Like, let's throw it against the wall. Let's see if it <laughs> sticks. And if it sticks, we're going to run that way and kind of figure it out as it goes before it hits the bottom of the ground. That's what we do here, too. And if it doesn't stick, you're like, okay, so we won't do it again. Right. right. No, pretty much. I, I totally love that. Christy Gillette says, you are both such an inspiration. Thank you all for what you're doing for children in Charlottesville. Heart emoji, mm -hmm. heart emoji, Aww. heart emoji. So um, shout out to Christy. She runs uh, Little, Little Explorers, Explorers Discovery School in Crozet. Also, uh, Kids in Nature. Dude, I could totally see a Little Planets <laughs> in like um, Crozet, yeah. um, Holly Mead Forest Lakes, Zion's Crossroads, mm -hmm. the headquarters epicenter here in Ix, and then you guys doing like two to three festivals a weekend, and then having like two <laughs> to three festivals that are your own, and then like the whole like design play uh, play space that has like endless potential. Because yeah. you could totally take that to people's homes, almost if you're like getting into the business of like designing like outdoor patios and like back yeah, decks yeah. for people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think people's homes for sure, but I think mm -hmm. there's such a need in just the places parents go. Like right now, I'm thinking about all the breweries and wineries yeah. and mm -hmm. coffee shops and places that just, I mean, it doesn't have to be big, but it just has to be something for the kids to do that is going to be really fun for them. Or how about the libraries who are struggling to have people come in their doors? If you created a play space in the library, that would get parents coming in, yeah. staying yeah. sticky at the libraries because they're not doing that because of cell phones. I love this concept. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and people obviously do as well. Uh, guys, here's what you can expect from us is we're going to archive this entire interview on ilovesevil.com. We will send the, concept, the content to the ladies as well. Um, you guys have absolute rights to the content. You can do whatever you want. Um, we will spotlight them across our network for the next 30 or 45 days. I see it firsthand with my son, with our son. Um, it's bona fide. It's like the real deal. Little Planets is, is the real deal. Um, so get out there and try them out at Ix. Where, where, give us an idea schedule-wise for festivals coming up. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so the big ones we have coming up um, are going to be uh, Rooster Walk, uh -huh. uh, and then where's that? That's in Martinsville. That's okay. south. That, okay. that was that's the furthest one we do. Um, Red Wing Roots, super family friendly, beautiful mm -hmm. festival. Uh, we do Floyd Fest, which is the huge one. Yeah. Um, and then we do Red Wing Roots. Mm -hmm. Did I already say that one? Yeah. Um, Hoopla. Okay. Um, which is also at Devil's Backbone, and we do actually uh, the Music and the Blue Ridge series at Devil's Backbone as well. Mm -hmm. Which so those are just one day events. So if you've got a really little one and you're not up for camping, those are wonderful ones to bring them to. How many festivals um, do you do a year? I think we have like 15 on the schedule for summer, some larger, some smaller. 15 in one season? Uh, yeah. Such a baller. Season. That is so <laughs> awesome. That is, and you bring your kids with you? To most of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Them. I love that they aspect of being us. an entrepreneur yeah. too. Um, you killed it. 
Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for having thank us you. on. Thank yes, you. it's fun. Um, guys, check it out. All the content in the show on ilovesebo.com. We'll send it to Little Planets as well. Tomorrow, we are telling the Anderson's Seafood story. Oh. I think you remember Anderson's Carriage House across from Barracks Road Shopping Center. Their landlord um, was not very nice to them and eventually knocked down the building. Um, I think, or, or, you know, we'll get to that tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Ted and his business partner, which is his awesome, awesome, awesome wife, um, are keeping the Andersons brand going. And you will be surprised to how this entrepreneurial journey is continuing, where he's literally getting the freshest seafood possible in Charlottesville and meeting folks at high traffic areas mm -hmm. with a cooler and a pop-up tent around town. So I like it epitomizes like the do what you got to do mindset of successful entrepreneurs. We will talk about the evolution of Anderson's and Anderson's Carriage House tomorrow on the Isle of Seville show. Uh, I want to thank Harris Tolber and Judah Wickhauer and Lauren Linsky for helping us with this program. 12.30 to 1.30 on the Isle of Seville network. And we close the show the same way every time. Guys, it's about the golden rule. Please treat others like you want to be treated yourself. I'm not going to make this about religion. I'm just going to make this about treating people with respect. And if you do this, it's going to have a viral impact in Charlottesville. And I think our community undoubtedly needs the golden rule mindset to be kind of infused throughout Central Virginia. So treat others like you want to be treated yourself and watch what happens from a positive standpoint. Um, I'm Jerry Miller. It's the I Love Seville Show. We will see you tomorrow at 1230 with the Anderson Carriage House story. Have a good afternoon. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Seriously, thank Ooh. you. It was so good. Uh, an hour and one minute right there. And we've got uh, one more thing to do, Judah. we got to get the uh, promo pick, and we'll do that over here.